Hey, welcome back to another Millionaire Mind episode where I have some of the most successful business owners sharing what motivates them to get out of bed every morning and how they elevate themselves and their companies to the next level. And today you guys are in for another treat. So some of the best entrepreneurs I've met, some of the most successful ones are ones that were working in an industry and then noticed something that could be improved. And so they they went in, they improved or created a solution that they realized other people in that industry were struggling with. And our guest today was able to do that. And as a young tech entrepreneur, he was able to implement this into his own business and now is offering it to other people in the space as well. So there's going to be a ton of nuggets in this interview today. If you're interested in SaaS or software as a service, um, or in you're in the or you're in the insurance agency, I guarantee there's something you're going to get out of our interview today. So super excited to get into it. A special welcome to our guest Zach. Zach, thank you for joining us today. Excited to be here, Dallin. Yeah, thanks for having me. So Zach, why don't you take a couple minutes and just share with our listener a little bit about more of who you are and and what you do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'll try to try to keep it simple and, and sum it up. Um, yeah, 32 years old, live here in beautiful Scottsdale, Scottsdale Arizona, uh, originally from Illinois. Um, so I, I branched out here, pioneered myself out here uh, when I was 20. And then some, some of my family followed me um, to, to new lands uh, where it's warmer. So uh, I'm out here. You don't now have to and- shovel. You don't have to shovel sunshine in, in Scottsdale. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No complaints. Uh, so yeah, I love it out here. Uh, life is good. Uh, right now, what I'm doing um, as an entrepreneur, I've been an entrepreneur for about 11 years, I'd say now, roughly. And uh, right now what I'm doing, I have an insurance agency that I own and I have agents that I train and manage uh, as well as I, I sell policies myself in the life and health uh, space specifically. And I sell health insurance to entrepreneurs, uh, private um, affordable health insurance that makes more sense for an entrepreneur, uh, and uh, as well as life insurance. And I've uh, been doing that for three years, roughly. And uh, uh, then I also have a tech startup business. Well, it's, I guess you wouldn't say it's a startup anymore. It's about three years old. Uh, so I got the software as a system, a SaaS uh, company, and it's something I've always wanted uh, I've always been fascinated with the idea of having computers, uh, moving a bunch of ones and zeros around the internet and earning you money, uh, even when you're sleeping. I uh, just uh, love the idea of passive income, love the idea of having software go to work for me and uh, provide value and help other people. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm currently doing now. Super cool stuff. And, and Zach and I connected because one of my business partners actually signed up for Zach's service and and we come to find out that Zach's actually local to Arizona as well so mm-hmm. through some connections we were able to to connect with him so super excited to get to know Zach and and you guys are definitely in for some uh some incredible nuggets today so Zach you mentioned that you've been an entrepreneur for about 11 years but when would you say this journey really began for you yeah so i i took a business class in college and uh, I'd never been a big fan of school. I was always like a C student. And uh, it kind of reminds me of that book, um, A Students Work for C Students with Robert Kiyosaki. But uh, I, I didn't really read that book until later on. But I've always been a C student, C, B student. Uh, and I just was never that super stoked about school in general, just like the structure, the the rigidness of it. Uh, but I ended up taking a business class and I liked it. Uh, I was always a little interested in business uh, in general and tech in general. And uh, one of my projects was to interview um, a business owner. So I uh, had my dad's friend that owned a construction company and I met up with him and had a little conversation, a little interview with him. And uh, we just talked about his lifestyle, talked about, you know, what he what he's able to do is income wise and, and just different things like that. And I was fascinated. I'm like, I didn't know really what entrepreneurship was. I was always kind of like, you got to go to school. You got to get a job, you got to work 60 years or to retire, you know, it's just like that, you know, uh, I guess base. And that's fine if that, it works for a lot of people. It just, it, it would never excited me. So when I had that conversation with him, that I guess that planted a seed. And then uh, when I turned 20 is when I was looking for that opportunity. And I actually stumbled uh, upon a network marketing opportunity. I had no idea what network marketing was, uh, but I was curious and it, it seemed fun and interesting. And it was with um, a company called Vima. It's not a company that's around any, anymore, but I uh, really 
learned a ton. I learned skills that are invaluable. Uh, it's basically like training wheels for entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is what I would say. And I learned how to communicate. Uh, I learned how to network. I learned basic business principles. I learned profit over wages. I just learned a lot of things that I never heard before, never learned in school, uh, never was taught and uh, just blew my mind. And I was like, this is my path. I don't know exactly what this is going to look like, but I know I want money working for me and I know I want freedom and I, uh, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. Uh, so that's that's really where the seed was planted and uh, where the first opportunity came to me when I was about 20 years old. That's, I got to say, that's the most optimistic uh, mindset or phrase around network marketing that I've ever heard from anyone. Uh, when you yeah, say training yeah. wheels for yeah. entrepreneurship, yeah. <laughs> we, we listen, we've all had that friend that's been in, in network oh, marketing yeah. and it's like, oh gosh, here they go again. And unfortunately it gets a lot of bad rap, but Zach, I think you did a, a brilliant job in highlighting a lot of the good things that could come from it. If right. you're somebody that's considering entrepreneurship, because they are all about culture and sales and communication and, and, uh, and there's a lot that you can really glean from right. those network marketing companies. Um, and that you said that was something you just stumbled into. Yeah. I was, uh, walking through my dorm lounge, uh, at ASU. That's where I went to school and bumped into this guy named Alex Morton and, uh, another friend of his, Nick Patak. And they educated me on this energy drink that tasted okay, I guess, but I was more interested in the business side of it. I'm like, well, it's healthy. It's biz. You know, there's a business. How does this work? And uh, that's what really got, I was a super shy kid. I didn't have the skills to succeed in entrepreneurship. So I needed all that, all those skills uh, to, to be where I'm at today. I don't know, no way I would be where I'm at without that. And um, I'm no longer in the, in the industry, but um, it was where things started. It's where it kicked it off for me, kind of show me the light, like what's possible. And, and once your mind expands to what's possible and you see other people doing things that, uh, you wish you can do and you start, you know, like, Oh, you know, I, I, this is crazy. Like I, maybe I can do this. And, and that's what happened to me. My mind just expanded and I couldn't retract it back to where it was before. It, you don't know what you don't know, but as soon as you start connecting and seeing people doing what you want to be doing, mm -hmm. it, it, you could start visualizing it. You can see it. And then internally you start gravitating towards it. And that's the case with the, a lot of entrepreneurs. Now, um, I, Maybe you stated this and I, and I and I missed it. Did you grow up in an entrepreneurship home? Not no, not necessarily. Uh, my mom dabbled a little bit. She she like uh, got into some franchises here and there, uh, but it wasn't something I was nat naturally taught growing up. It was more of like, hey, you're going to college, you're going to graduate, find a good job, something steady, something safe. You know, my dad was the same way, and you know, and that that was basically what I was like. All right, I guess this is what I'm doing. Um, so I didn't really see anything else other than that. And it wasn't exciting, but I was like, I don't know what else to do when, you know, you're 18, 19, 20. So I'm like, I was just going down that path. So it, it's something I really had to uh, learn myself, so very self-taught through personal development, men big mentors, um, whether they're online or in person, just, just diving headfirst into any knowledge I can gather because, uh, you know, we have it at our fingertips now. So there's really no excuse to, you know, find what you're looking for. And uh, that's that's really what um, got me more and more into it. The, the deeper I would dive, where it's just like this is this is the only lifestyle for me. I can't see another lifestyle. This is it. I'm I'm psychologically unemployable. So that's, that's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Love it. And listen to our listener. You 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 heard it right here. Zach didn't grow up in an entrepreneurship home. I think for those that are looking to get started in business or want to become an entrepreneur, you probably know someone who started a business, whose parents started a business, whose grandparents started a business. But that doesn't have to be the case. I grew up in a very similar situation as Zach did, but here I am going out and starting my own business. And a couple things. Number one, you don't need a business degree to start a business, period. Oh. Number two, if you feel that inner, how do, how do I call it, that inner dissatisfaction with your current job or career or path, do something about it. That's a beautiful thing about business and entrepreneurship is that you can take matters into your own hands. Now it's not easy. It requires uh, a, a lot of strength and faith and confidence in yourself, but it can be done. And Zach and I are, are here talking about it. 100%. So 
Zach, after this networking opportunity, what uh, what happened next? How how did you find yourself getting to that next level? What did that look like? Yeah, actually, uh, so this is what back in 2014, 15, when the, I was moving away from the networking opportunity and, and getting more and more interested in tech. Uh, and this is where an app start, first started really coming out, like where I believed that, oh, maybe I can make my own app. You know, I don't know. I have no idea how to do it, uh, but I know it'd be cool to have one, you know, and uh, uh, let's figure it out. So uh, I teamed up with one of my um, college buddies that I was roomed with and we you know, put, put our head together, got a whiteboard out and started jotting down ideas and and concepts and things like that and ended up coming out with the base idea of what we can create. And uh, that led to creating an app called Friender, uh, which it's no longer on, on the on the market. But at the time, um, it was a great opportunity for me to start learning how to build tech and how to earn money from tech. And we were able to generate investments uh, and learn. So I was learning how to how to network, how to sell an idea, how to uh, we, we went kind of big Shark Tank style. We went to uh, ASU like uh, uh, they had like this program where you can present your ideas to a bunch of investors and they invite a bunch of investors. So we were like, all right, let's put a speech together and, and go do that. And and it was just a good experience. I'm like, whether we get the investment or not, we're going to learn how to do that, how to pitch to investors. And uh, so we just we just pieced everything together. I think one of, one skill that I have that I know is one of my strengths is resourcefulness. And I think as an entrepreneur, that's major is uh, just being resourceful, uh, asking around, networking, Googling different websites, research, finding where your resources are. You don't have to have all the money yourself. You don't have to have all the all the brains yourself. You can always outsource. So just being very resourceful would be a huge uh, thing that I recommend. And, and uh, that's that's what I did next. I got into building an app and uh, we actually did, we, asked, we raised uh, about 400 grand um, to launch oh, it. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, at 23, 24 at, at the time, uh, I I felt pretty excited about that. I'm like, I can't believe we actually raised money. This is, this is crazy. And uh, yeah, we just had and at 20, at 23, 400K is a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Even if you're not 23, if you're in your thirties, forties, 400K could still be a lot of money for some people. So at 23 exactly. years old, that's probably the most money you've seen at one time. Oh, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. The, it was uh it was wild. It felt like a dream. It's like, all right, all that hard work, all the determination, trying to be creative, falling on my face, you know, it, eventually it pays off. If you're consistent and you keep your head down and you, and you believe in what you're doing, it'll pay off. It's just a matter of time, some, some sooner than others, but, and that's where my head was at. I, I had no doubt that we were going to get some traction with it. So, um, you know, that was, yeah, that was the, the next venture after, uh, after network marketing. There's two things you mentioned that I, I want to touch on. Number one, resourcefulness. Mm -hmm. That is an extremely, in my opinion, an extremely uh, underrated and undervalued skill. I mean, when, when's the last time you heard of, about a book being written about resourcefulness or something? That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but it's so critical for entrepreneurship because you are an entrepreneur at the core is a problem solver. Yep. And they know that they can't do it on their own. So Zach, what were some of the the ways that looking back, reflecting on your journey, what were some of the things that that you did that you now realize helped contribute to your ability to be resourceful? Yeah. Uh, I would, uh, so actual things that, were, okay, to, to be resourceful. I think uh, just taking action. I think action and resourcefulness go hand in hand. So um it's one thing to have an idea, but really part of my French ideas don't mean shit if you don't take action on them. Like if you don't execute, if you're not good at executing and taking action or going after that resource, then it, it's just, it's not gonna do much for you. It's just an idea in your head and and everyone's got ideas. It's nothing really special. So I think people maybe over romanticize an idea if it's a good one and that's it. And it's really, it's unfortunate because I want to see it brought to life. I want to take action to execute on those ideas and uh, just uh, just finding resources, uh, whether that's browsing the internet, Googling it, that's where you can start. And then that leads to a million other things, right? Networking, talking to friends, family, uh, maybe remembering, oh, I remember this guy's in this industry. Let me ask him a question. Maybe he knows someone uh, that it can help me and help us get this idea off the ground. But you got to take action. That That's probably my number one thing I would, I would uh, say for anyone 
getting into entrepreneurship, getting into investing, getting into business, take more action than you think you need to. And uh, that's going to resolve a lot of anxiety if you have any anxiety and uncertainty because that, that comes with entrepreneurship because you're there's a lot of uncertainty, but that's just natural. You got to get used to that feeling. Uh, but taking more and more action will resolve a lot of that and will get you way farther ahead than most people that just come up with ideas. That is such sound advice because we, we've all experienced this. Our minds are incredible at blowing things out of proportion or making things seem a lot of a bigger deal than they probably really need to be. That's mm -hmm. just how it's how we're wired. The times that I procrastinated that I put something off because of the fear of something and I finally decided to execute on it, I realized it was way easier. Mm -hmm. And like all that worrying, all that time, all that stuff I put into it, I should have just done it and yeah. gotten it over with because I realized it wasn't, as, it wasn't as bad as it really was. And so that action is the only thing that's helped me overcome that. And then when you do this consistently enough for an extended period of time, you condition your brain, you condition right. yourself to just do it. Yeah. I kind of yeah. like, I kind of like it in a, into a like cold plunging. Mm -hmm. I freaking hate the cold, man. I grew yeah. up in upstate New York and now I live in Arizona, right? So we got a Chicago Chicago yeah. guy and a New York guy that are living in Arizona because I I like the warmth. Cold plunging, however, is something that I've done. I forget all the health benefits. I know that comes with it. For me, it's been a mental challenge because it sucks. I yeah. hate going in that <laughs> shock. But once you're in and you're breathing through it, you realize, okay, this isn't as bad as mm -hmm. it, as it could be. And I found myself since I started doing that consistently approaching different tasks in the business in a similar way. And when I go in, I don't just put one foot in and then get to my knee and then get to my, no, I go all the way in. Wow. Otherwise I'm going to probably back out. Yep. And so I've seen that in some of these tasks and phone calls and things that I may not want to do or that I'm procrastinating. It's like, let's just go. And I just, I find myself going in and then finishing it up and realizing, okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Mm -hmm. And that all starts with action. Taking the first so. step. It's really that easy. Just taking the first step. And then, yeah, like you said, you kind of condition yourself. Like I do every day I'm taking action now. It's like, and then you don't procrastinate anymore. And you're just like doing it. I'm just going to do it. It's just what I do. It's not like I, I don't wait. I don't procrastinate. I just take the first step. Even if my mind is like telling me no, and my mind's kind of like, come on, just do it later, you know? As an entrepreneur, you don't have a boss telling you what to do. You gotta, you gotta push yourself. You're your own boss, so like, you you gotta have that willpower to like take the first step. And then it, it always is much easier than what your mind makes it out to be. Uh, once you get in the flow of it, you you kind of like change your mood changes, your energy changes, and you're like, all right, I'm in it now. It's not, it wasn't so bad. Just just embrace it. Just lean into it. I do. So I love that action uh, at least to execution, and and that's what you found to be one of your best ways to be resourceful. Yeah. One thing I'll add to this that I've experienced too is this idea around social currency and the ability of just having wealth within your network. Yeah. I network all the time now and I'm telling you, I was that person that hated networking. Mm -hmm. I remember going to my first event, everybody's networking. I'm sitting in my chair, not speaking to anyone because I was so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I was so out of my comfort zone, but I can tell you with full confidence and honesty that the only reason the opportunities I've been able to participate in have happened has been because of the relationships and the people I've met over the last few years. So for you listening, maybe one of those things, maybe you're taking action. Maybe you need to take more action in the networking space or, or connect with people because it's it's through those people. And, and Zach mentioned this earlier. It's like, who do I know that might be able to introduce me? to someone. If you don't have a network, it's kind of difficult to even be able to ask yourself that question. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And then the second thing you mentioned earlier, Zach, that I want to touch on is being consistent until it'll pay off. Mm -hmm. Invite our listener a little bit more into your mindset there. Right. So you just, it's almost like having enough faith in yourself and faith in how the universe operates. Uh, it's like what you're putting in, you're reaping what you sow. And that's like a universal law. And it, it might not, you might not reap it immediately. Uh, it, it, and especially in entrepreneurship, it could take days, weeks, months, maybe even years. But 
Uh, if you're putting in that consistent action and and you and you believe and you have faith that it's going to produce a result when you plant that seed and you water it, um, then then you shouldn't have any doubt in your mind because you know that's universal law. You know that's how things work, and you just you believe that and you and you keep pouring in. And when you continue to pour in, something's got to crack. Eventually, something's got to crack. It's you're not going to pour in for. 20 years and nothing happens. Like that's just not how things work. If you're adding value to someone's life, if you're adding value to someone's business, whatever it may be, eventually um, it's going to come back to you. You're going to reap what you sow and it's going to be worth it. And if you got to have that mindset when you're in business or when you're making investments, when you're doing things like that, you have to, um, otherwise you're going to drive yourself crazy. Or you're just going to give up. You're going to say, Oh, didn't get the result. Does not working. I give up. But it's always when you get to that one point where there's like the most resistance and you're and you just you have enough, you muster up enough willpower to push past over that little wall. Then it's like the floodgates open and you just start reaping big time and you and you, you get that breakthrough. But that breakthrough, you know, it's coming because it, it, you get this like wall of resistance. It's like a, a natural thing that happens um, in entrepreneurship. And then you just push through it. You say, hey, most people give up right now in your mind. You're like, most people would just quit. But what if I don't? What if I push through? What if I overcome? What will happen? Because th is, this is why most people aren't successful because they're not willing to go through that uncomfortable um, phase temporarily to get that result. But that's that's where success is created. It's every time next time you're like struggling or you're you're frustrated or you're like uh, you're, you're 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 in your head. Just be like, oh, this is where success is created. It's not created when things are easy. It's created right now when I'm going through this right now. So I'm actually creating success right now. I'm creating um, results right now. And, and that switches your mindset to and almost enjoy that discomfort or that resistance and look at it in a new light to get uh, the result that you're after. And, it, and, and that's been my mindset. And it, it's worked every time when I'm really going after something. So that's that's my advice I would give. Okay, if you're listening, go back and re-listen to those last two to three minutes. Like what Zach just shared with us, we could do an entire hour podcast just on that. Um, one of the last things you mentioned, enjoy the discomfort. That's mm -hmm. why I cold plunge, dude. For, yep. Again, forget all the health benefits. Like <laughs> I hate it so much, but I'm doing it to try to condition my exactly. brain. So yeah, I, I want to spend a little bit more time here and, and pick out some of the things that you mentioned, Zach, because I, I just there's so much gold in there. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And so when we get back, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into what Zach just expanded uh, with us in, in the last few minutes. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back. So, Zach, one of the first things that I, I um, caught you mentioning when I asked your question about being consistent, you brought up the word faith. Mm -hmm. Now, when people uh, think of the word faith, it, oftentimes it, it has a religious connotation to it. Mm -hmm. And in my experience, a lot of entrepreneurs have some sort of religion. I mean, mm -hmm. religion is faith in, mm -hmm. in, at the core of it. But why faith? Why was that one of the first things that you you happened to mention? And and you probably mm -hmm. didn't even realize it was one of the first things. It just came out of your mouth yeah. naturally. <laughs> but uh, why do you think that is? Why faith? Yeah, great question. Uh, I would say it's because you got you got to have um the faith to bet on yourself you because that's what you're doing and i think the best investment you can make is in yourself because it's going to apply to more things than just business it's going to apply to your entire life uh your relationships uh, everything so when you invest in yourself whether that's uh personal development that's going to seminars that's that's learning new skills that is starting new businesses Whatever it may be, you're, you're, you're investing in your in your personal growth. Uh, it, it's you got to have faith because you got to have faith that betting on yourself is going to pay off, right? So uh, most people would rather throw money at something else and have that have it pay off that way. But I think the best investments in yourself uh, because it, it's just it bleeds into every aspect of your life, mentally, socially, physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever. And uh, investing in yourself, in my mind, is is the best investment, and you have to have faith to do that. And that's that's hard for a mm -hmm. lot of people, and and I and I don't think our current um, social media pandemic helps mm -hmm. at all with any mm -hmm. of that, because it's, I mean, even before that, 
people struggled with trying to just figure out who they are and who they wanted to be. But it's hard, especially with social media now, like as connected as we are as a society, I don't think we've ever been so disconnected. And you see all these people doing different things. And it's like, oh, Zach looks happy. This, maybe I should try that. Or, oh, that, that person looks happy. Let me try that. And we we lose the ability to have faith in ourselves because we're looking too externally for what that next step might be or right. what we need to do. So entrepreneurship just in itself, I think develops a lot of uh, courage and confidence for that individual because you have to figure it out. Right. You have to bet on yourself and know that not every decision you make is going to work out as planned and you get used to that. It's okay. It, yeah. it becomes part of that process. And to your point, enjoying the discomfort, like right. we're willingly going into business opportunities, not knowing if it's for sure going to work out like that. Who does that? Right. right? Like, and, and then our, our minds, we want certainty. We want, we want guarantees. We want certainty. So like, why do people like us go into something without having that? And it's because of that faith we're betting on ourselves. And it's really, we recognize who we're becoming along the way. It's either you, you, uh, you win or you learn. That's my mindset. It's not win or lose. It's win or learn. So I really, I if you boil it down. I'm winning every time because if I'm learning, I'm winning. So I can't lose. Like, even if I fail, I fail forward and I get better. I make progress you got to have the this mindset otherwise you're going to get beat up you know it's not an easy sport when it comes to business so uh it is a lot of uh, i guess psychological relation to um sports psychology uh, in a sense and i and i have a sports background where i was a M mma fighter cage fighter for years and things like that and and i you know physically got beat up but it made me stronger just like jumping in cold plunges like you do it's like, well, I'm choosing to do this because I know I'm going to learn something or I'm going to win. I'm going to become stronger mentally uh, and it, I'm going to grow. And it's all about, it's all about progress and growth. Like, I don't think you can be truly happy if you're not progressing. In my mind, progress equals happiness in every sense. And if you're stagnant, just like stagnant water, it's it's not going to be uh, good water to drink um, eventually, right? Um, so a stagnant person in, in life, um, it, it's not good for you. It's, it's not what you're meant to do. It's not in your nature. Sometimes it's the easy thing to do, but is it really easy? No, it's like, like choose I, your I heart. Con- yeah. Yes. Yeah. I had this conversation with someone the other day. Going to the gym every day and eating healthy, it's hard work. Not going to the gym, sitting on the couch, eating crap, losing breath, getting up the stairs is hard. Like you just gotta ultimately choose your heart. Now, one, I think is a more natural default, and that's usually the path of least resistance Mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to sit on the couch it's a lot easier to eat cheap crappy food Mm -hmm. but is that truly what's going to lead you to to ultimate happiness and joy right you mentioned you you win or you learn my my oldest is nine years old and she uh she went through this phase where she was saying like oh i failed and i was like whoa 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 we don't we don't say that, not in this household. Mm-hmm. And so I reconditioned her and I'll ask her when she's like, oh, I'm such a failure. I'm like, no, no, no. What did you do? And she's like, "Ugh, I learned. And so I, I've i helped her reframe that it's not a failure if you learn something from it. And uh, so I love how you mentioned that you win or you learn. It's not mm-hmm. win or lose. You win or you learn. So yeah. another, another thing you mentioned, Zach, is uh, adding value. Now this this has been brought up a, quite a bit on this on the oh, show, sure. yep. <laughs> but there's a reason for it. So invite us into your reasoning for bringing that up. Yeah, so it, it kind of brings me back to Jim Rohn. Um, you're not paid uh, for the for the time you spend working in the marketplace. You're paid for the value you bring to the marketplace. So you bring more value. If you want to earn if you more, want to earn more income, you just bring more value and find ways to do that. Find ways to become more valuable, whether it's you know learning skills or gaining knowledge or learning how to share and communicate um, that knowledge. And there's a million different ways to to bring value, but find what that market needs and uh, find ways to bring it value. You know, solve tough problems, be a good problem solver. Um, so that's where that really comes from. Is um, 
um, Jim Rome back in the day, um, listening to him when I was 20, 21 and just learning these new ideas, like, you know, never heard this before. This is, that makes so much sense. You know, I'm going to try that. Um, so that's, yeah, that's where that comes from. And that's hard. That's hard for a lot of people to, to understand and comprehend, uh, especially if they're new to the business world, because for most of all of our lives, we're taught, go to school, get good grades, go to college to become a W2 employee. Yeah. And then we look at like, I remember looking for jobs and comparing with friends and buddies like, Oh, you're getting $15 an hour. I'm getting $16 an hour. And we start, that becomes our norm. So we're associating payment with time. And the longer you stay with a company, you get paid a little bit more, right? Uh, the more hours you work, you get paid a little bit more. So that mindset is, is, is built into us at such a young age, yeah. but the beautiful thing about entrepreneurship is you completely shatter that that mind thing that that mindset and that thinking and so that quote i think is incredible you're not paid for the time that you're spending or putting in the marketplace you're paid for the value mm -hmm. and value does not necessarily have to be money and right. in my experience some of the most successful business owners are not the ones that have made people more money they're the ones that have saved people time cuz mm -hmm. at the core of it I think all of us can agree that time is the most precious resource right. because it's finite. Right. Like it, we don't know when our time's going to be up. Money will come and go. Yep. But yeah, so much of us spend so much of our time chasing this money dream and vision that's all over the place. Where if you can find a way to bring value and help a group and in industry get their time back you probably have a good opportunity. And that usually comes from solving problems or challenges of some kind. Yeah. That's why I love software. It, it saves a lot of people time and, and does things for them. So, so let's, let's get into that step of your journey and we might be fast forwarding a little bit, but um, due, due to time, you, you went from the network marketing and then uh, you started this app. Mm -hmm. At what point did you start getting into this insurance uh, yeah. industry and, and how did you recognize this opportunity for the software you're, you're currently operating? Yeah. Well, you know, in my mind, um, I always used to think like, ah, oh, insurance, that's boring. I, I want to do something exciting. I don't want to, I don't want to sell insurance or be involved in insurance. And, um, and I guess I was thinking more of like sitting in an office in a cubicle, you know, and, and that just is definitely not my, my cup of tea. So that's, that's what I assumed. That's what insurance would be like. But then I uh, had a, a buddy of mine that was a broker and he and he was working for himself and he can work from anywhere and he can uh, work with multiple products and companies and and not just have to be, you know, locked into one company, one cubicle type box. Right. So that intrigued me. And I mean, if you Google the most uh, successful industries or the, in, in, the, in the country, it's like tech and financial services. I think financial services might be number one. Uh, but I was like, okay, there's money in insurance. Um, and, uh, there's, there's fun ways to do it and people need it. And it's, it's here for the long haul. Cause I know 2020 just happened. And then I was like, well, I need something a little stable, a little bit more stable or an industry that's not really going to get blown away. Um, so it just checked a lot of boxes for me to where I was like, okay, that's cool. And I could build a team. I love building a team. I love training people. I love helping people uh, succeed, putting them in a position to win giving them the resources, giving them the, the, the training, anything they need and all the tools to, to win. So it, it checked all those boxes. I got into insurance in 2020 at, towards the end of the year. And, uh, um, I haven't looked back since, you know, just, um, uh, I love the industry. I love how it works. And, uh, and I did realize that it was kind of old school in their methods. And that's what spawned, uh, the SaaS company. I was like, uh, you know, how, what can I do? to so solve this dinosaur age sales style that uh, a lot of these insurance agencies operate under. And, th and that's what led to uh, my current company, uh, TurboTax. And you've, uh, how long have you been running that company? You said three years. About three years. Yep. Uh, roughly. Okay. Yeah. Roughly three years. So, yeah. And and this is something when when we previously talked, this was something you, you tried out first you started on your own. And then mm -hmm. when you got some proof of concept, you started introducing it to some exactly. other people in the space. 
Exactly. So, so uh, you know, I started selling, you know, the first, the first three to six, six months, you know, I, I saw some success, um, things were working, but I, I also noticed a lot of problems, a lot of clunkiness in the insurance space and a lot of things that could be improved. Uh, I was aware there was different technologies I can, I can bring to, to the insurance world to help the average independent agent win um, and uh, found different ways to automate things, um, to fo auto follow up, auto text, you know, power dial, this, that, the other, um, and just enhance the experience for new agents. And uh, I wanted to do that um, for myself initially. I'm like, all right, I know this, this would probably help my business. So um, teamed up with uh, one of my um uh, one of my really good friends, his name is Matt Proud, and he was more familiar of the tech space and, and how that all works. So I teamed up with him, um, shared with him everything that was, you know, an issue with my our, our current sales processes and like what can we do to create solutions here. And uh, we were able to put it, uh, put the software together, test it um, for me to make sure it works, get that proof of concept, and hey, it worked ten times better than anticipated. I'm like, all right, I think we got something here. Um, we should. We should uh, box this up and uh, button it up and clean it up and and uh, get some beta testers and make it even better and and uh, share this with the rest of the insurance agent industry. And uh, that's exactly what we did. Uh, and we we're excited about it. And I think that's key when you it's a key indicator if you should pursue something, if it brings excitement. Um, so that's that was that's key for me. And I think for most people. So we we pursued it. And, yeah, we had our tri trials and tribulations. Uh, but then we we got it to where something clicked and and uh, people just started telling other agents about it. So a lot of the marketing, we haven't even uh, ran one Facebook ad, nothing. It's all been word of mouth. Wow. It's all been just people like, hey, I like this. This works. You should you should uh, you should try it. And that's I think that's the best form of marketing is a good product first. Oh, yeah. And then you go from there. And and one thing I'd like to highlight as well is that you you niche down to the insurance industry yes. yeah like your 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 software turbo text sounds like it could be used for anything and then it probably can but you really niche down and found right. that group because that's the industry that you knew and that right. those are the people you were associating with so to our listener keep that in mind like they they call it uh, riches in the niches right mm -hmm. so if you 100%. can find if you can find something that you enjoy that energizes you in an industry and just find a way to improve it or, or create a tool to help more people save time or make money. You're you've got an opportunity there, but again, it goes back to what, what Zach was sharing with us. You've got to execute at that yes. point. Yes. So, I mean, how many of us have had ideas and like, Oh yeah, that'd be cool. And then we go to bed and we forget about it and we don't do anything. So exactly. find that idea that excites you that you can't stop thinking about and explore it start asking around start taking action so that's uh that's part of your your market research right yeah yeah 100 yeah, percent. <laughs> so well zach what were what was one of the biggest challenges you experienced while really trying to launch and and grow the SaaS company hmm. you know it's it's a good question um you know there's a combination of different challenges uh, that come along um the biggest one, hmm. Well, you know, I can I can talk about a recent challenge, uh, and I think this would be good for people that, you know, have things come up that are outside of their control, and uh, we had like a whole um, a new texting regulation for for uh, the a nationwide texting regulation called A two P um, for um, just texting in general with with software. And it really threw a stick in the wheel for our growth. We were we were um, crushing, and uh, you know it was outside of our control. We we do, but all you can do is all you can do. You you just manage it, and you just you know you roll the punches and you stick it out. And that's what's going to happen. You can't expect it to be gravy and sunshine and rainbows like every day and every week. It's just things are going to happen outside of your control. But it's how you respond to that. It's it's not. It's, there's nothing you can do if it's outside your control, but what you can control is how you handle it, how you respond, how you manage your emotions. Do you let it get to you? Do you let it you know, push you around? Or do you keep a level head, accept the reality, and then quickly have your brain jump to finding solutions versus finding problems and, and, and just dwelling on the problem? Just 
you know, switch up your brain. Like, okay, what's a good solution? What can I do? What's in my control? I can only control the controllables. So it, it's a waste of time and energy to focus on what I can't control and complain about it and, and this and that and the other. It's like, what can I do? That's all I can do is all I can do. So uh, that's how we uh, we got through that and um, and overcame you know the new regulation and and now we're we're, we're back on track moving forward. Um, so I, I feel like it could have knocked a lot of people off their their horse in the same position, but uh, with developing the right mindset through personal growth and and everything I've been through and all the steps I've taken and past experiences, it's it set me up to be able to to overcome that. I. I feel like we've all probably met somebody that's super successful and they just seem to be calm and collected mm -hmm. all the time. And I've grown to realize that they probably weren't always that way, but that was more of a, an acquired skill because when your brain gets thrown into fight or flight and that can happen all the time in entrepreneurship, because there's always fires you got to put out. There's always things that are unexpected. It is hard to be able to think logically because you're mm -hmm. reacting when you're in this fight or flight and, and stresses of the business and entrepreneurship can easily trigger this. And so when I, when I've connected with these people, very successful business owners, and they just, they just have this level mindset and then just energy about them. I've realized that they've just mastered that mm -hmm. over the years of mm -hmm. dealing, learning how to deal with challenges and it's to a point where they're like anything could get thrown at them and they're like oh all right that sucks let's figure it out yep because it just becomes a part of of who they are it reminds so, me of um you can tell the size of a man by the size of the problems he handles and, and how he responds to them uh, so you know if, if a one little tiny thing someone spills their coffee and freaks out versus another guy that you know has a huge fire to put out in a massive company and handles it with grace it's like, okay, well, he's developed into the guy that can handle that. And anyone can do that. It's just uh, something that someone I look for. It's like when I'm networking or doing business or whatever, it's like, you know, what really gets to someone a small problem like that? It's going to throw you off your rocker. It's like, I mean, what if something really serious happened, right? How are you going to handle that? So that was uh, something I learned a couple of years ago that made a lot of sense to me. Awesome. Well, Zach, we're already out of time. I knew that this interview was going to go quick <laughs> and, and it's been an absolute pleasure just, just talking with you and, and inviting myself and our listeners into your, your mindset. Yeah. But as we wrap this up, there's four questions I like to ask every guest at the end of every show. And so I, I'd like to jump into those the last few minutes. For yeah, and number one being, what is one absolute book recommendation for those looking to scale and further develop their millionaire mind? It, it, uh, it's a good question. So the, the first book that comes to mind, there's lots of good, good books. I'm a big reader. Um, I try to read as much as possible. And uh, But the first book that comes to mind is uh, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind, because I, th I think it's by T. Harv Eker, I believe. And that, and that book kind of broke me out of the, the small thinking that I, I had. It was like the, the small mindedness of what's possible for me um, and kind of like the subconscious understanding of, of uh, my ceiling, my financial ceiling. Uh, so that kind of, you know, it chipped away at it. it, didn't completely break it, but it chipped away at that and opened me up to um, different, uh, bigger ideas, bigger dreams. So that would be the book that I'd recommend. Awesome. That's an excellent book. And if I recall, is this the one where he does uh, training seminars where they put an arrow to their neck and they I have believe, people stand against a wall and then they break the arrow? I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. I, I think it was that book. Crazy. Yeah. Very good book. Very good yes. book. I've read that one as well. And, and again, that goes into the, the mindset secrets of a millionaire mind. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of these things that you listened on, on our interview today with Zach and I talking about will, will very likely be reiterated. And you start realizing that there's a, a common reoccurrence of mm -hmm. successful people, financially successful people. And, and it doesn't matter what industry they're in. I'm in real estate investing. Zach is in insurance and tech, but we still collaborate. There's still a lot of ideas and a lot of the, the things that we go through might look a little differently on the outside, but internally it's the same stuff. Right. Right. So common denominator. Good stuff. Yep. So what has been one of your favorite quotes that you've embodied and lived by? Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, it has to be Jim Rohn. Uh, don't ask for security, ask for adventure. Better to live 30 years full of adventure than a hundred years safe in the corner. 
and he says it with his funny uh tonality as well that makes it even better but that's uh been huge for me I, i'm all about yeah just squeezing all the juice out of life so that's that's really been a big influential quote for me love it Zach, if there was one thing you could share with fellow business owners that are beginning or simply trying to get to that next level, what would it be? If I had to pick one thing, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about before. Uh, it's simple as the word action, because uh, you're gonna, everything else is kind of going to flow when you take that action. You take that first step, you set that intention, and then you have that willpower and you take the first step, take action, execute and maybe just over execute and uh, aim high. And then you might even come up short, but at least you, you took action and you got a result. So just take more action that it's going to solve so many more of your problems, your money problems, your uh, anxiety problems, your not getting results problems, whatever. Um, just take more action. You'll learn, you'll grow, and it's going to be worth it. And then agree more, <laughs> take more action. Love it. Well, Zach, how can our listeners learn more about you and get in contact? Yeah, yeah for me, uh, I guess Instagram is probably the most uh, uh, used social media that I have. Um, so if you want to connect with me on Instagram, totally can. Um, shoot me a message, say what's up. Like I said, I love networking. So uh, you can follow me. Uh, it's just Z, my the first letter of my first name, and then my last name, Babiars. So it's Z Babiars. That's my, my handle, Z B A B. I A R Z. Um, and that's it um, for Instagram. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Zach, this has been absolutely incredible. And again, thank you for your time. And and listen, if this has been your first time listening, I'm so glad that you tuned in. People have been asking me what my company does. So since I have you here listening to my show, I'll share that with you now. So my company partners with busy professionals just like Zach that are looking to experience significant tax savings have more to invest and even reinvest their hard-earned capital. And we work with other successful business owners like you by offering them opportunities to invest alongside us in large apartment deals. At Rev Equity Group, we have found that most successful business owners have a strong desire to give and to serve. And we simply provide a vehicle to enable them to grow and preserve their wealth so they can give of their time and financial success more abundantly and freely. If you've been frustrated with the stock market, want to grow capital in something you can actually touch and see and invest in one of the most recession resilient asset classes, then you can find out how I can serve you by visiting investwithrev.com slash resources. It can be overwhelming vetting the right investment and the right operator, but at Rev, we make apartment investing easy. Well, Zach, again, thank you so much for your time and, and coming on the show and just inviting us into the exciting journey of of an entrepreneur and, and a young one too. I mean, you're 32 years old and this really started about 11 years ago. So I uh, really appreciate you inviting us in and sharing your story. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate you for having me on. It's been super fun and would love to come back and share more. So this is this is great. I love what you're doing. Thank you. Absolutely. And to our listener, remember, you can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. So go out there and earn your win for today and we'll catch you on the next episode.